Shutting off the main water valve at the castle is always a small adventure. You never know if the cellar is dry or you will need to wade through the water to reach the valve. Anyway, closing the water was one of the million little jobs that we had to do during our winter Nixie Tube factory expansion. As I mentioned previously, we've rented two new rooms, turning one of them into a machine shop and the other one into a laboratory. 70% of all time of our team is spent in manufacturing of Nixie tubes and the rest is in research and development. We always had to share the same space for the manufacturing and development which was really annoying because basically I had to clean all the things that I had laying on the tables so that the ladies can start the manufacturing the next day. It was especially the project of H-Tube that showed the lack of space for development in full beauty. So that was the reason why we decided to take the new rooms. It took us several months to get the rooms into shape. We removed some walls, made new floors and painted everything with white. What might seem a little bit impractical for a workshop because you can see all the mess on the floor, but that was the point. It forces us to keep the space tidy and when you work with tools for vacuum, uh, it, it counts. The credit for almost all the work goes to my old friend Peter, that's us on a hike in Romania in 2006. Peter's passion are bees, not actually production of honey, but more breeding the bees and making them stronger and less dependent on healing and human help in general. And because it was really fun to work together, Peter will work two or three days in a week for us as a freelancer and the rest of the week he will spend taking care of the bees. After moving all our machinery and tools to the new room, we jumped to our manufacturing space. The castle is a wonderful place to work at, but it has many drawbacks. We constantly fight with high humidity and molds, so from time to time we need to do a fresh paint. And now with Peter's help we can finally redo many things and make them properly. Uh, some things were made kind of lousy at the beginning when I had to focus on development on, on, the, on the Nixie tube. So we can finally, let's say, replace the extension cords with fixed cables. We can attach water pipes to the walls. We can fix leaky drain pipes. It's great that we can now do all these things and make them better because I often need to explain people that we need to do a perfect job and it doesn't help you to, to persuade them when they see the lousy job that you made on the installations, on our equipment in the, in the working space. A lot of work was already done and a lot of work is still ahead of us but the good thing is that the laboratory and the workshop is 
already running and we can use them for development of the H2. There are still a lot of problems, a lot of engineering to be done on the H2 and uh, I want to show you a few of them uh, which I want to focus on in the next weeks. Let's start with the most problematic part and this is the stack of the digits. All the tubes that I made so far that survived the glass ceiling and other operations had shorts between the digits. The problem is obvious, they are very close to each other and they are quite flimsy, they are very thin and uh, it's not very difficult to, to make a short between them. I wanted to keep the tube as shallow as possible. The solution would be to increase the thickness of the insulators and put the digits further from each other, but this would make the tube very, very deep and uh, the distance between the digits would be too high. We already have with two millimeters insulators, we already have quite good tree effect. So you can see how the digits are illuminated in the, in the space, but the tube is still reasonably thin. There are more possibilities how to secure the flimsy digits in the center of the digit stack and uh, a great source of inspiration turned out to be a collection of Nixie tubes made by Jens Boos. A possible solution would be to use additional column of insulators like the Nixie tube here. That would certainly work, we could use just a few of them and support just the digits that would need to be supported. Uh, the problem that I see here is that the columns are obstructing the digits from view, so it's not it's not a very elegant solution. It's definitely a working solution, but uh, I don't like it and I would personally like to go uh, the more traditional way of just having two stacks of insulators, one on the top, one on the bottom. But before we can even get to the design of the digits, we need to solve another problem and this is the rigidity of the anode cup, which is the main part which holds all the digits stack together. Just quickly, this is completely new technology for us. I designed a part that is formed by a metal stamping. I never ordered stamped parts because the tooling is, is too expensive and you need to make a lot of parts in order to, to make the production cost efficient. First I did some attempts to make this part myself with cutting a part from a sheet metal on a laser and then trying to form it over rubber and other, other, other things, but this didn't work, the part was even worse than, than at the beginning. Later I asked a local supplier to do this. The idea was to learn more about this technology and have someone uh, close to us uh, who could we discuss other stand parts with. This didn't work, they, they are specialized on smaller parts made from thinner metal and uh, they, had, they had similar problems with buckling of the, of the metal as we had. Uh, so later I was offered uh, to make this part by a Chinese company and uh, they were just absolutely amazing, it was super simple. I made a 3D model uh, of the part for them. Uh, whereas the, uh, this is the 3D model, I send them uh, this 3D model and they, within 24 hours they send me uh, their ideas how to, how to redesign the part in order to make it more rigid. First thing they suggested was to use thicker metal. We used 0.2 millimeters steel. Uh, they suggested using 0.5. And another improvement was using a rips like this here, which should improve the, the buckling. After one week I got pictures of the first samples and in three or four weeks the whole box with 300 pieces was on the way to us. So let's check the parts. Wow. It's really heavy but it's perfect. It's perfect. It's rigid. It doesn't bend easily. But it's really quite heavy. I'm, I'm afraid that it will make 
make problems during the shipment, but we'll see, we'll see. It was a great relief to open the box and see the parts made, the parts that we were struggling for so long time with. But before the parts arrived, we made this test on a solid bar and this test should tell us what the rigidity of the digits will be when we use it on a proper anode cup. It won't be easy to keep the digits from shorting, but uh, it's doable. A critical thing apart from perfectly straight digit will be to apply some pressure on the insulators because the pressure keeps them parallel. Here we used screws so it was very easy to play with the pressure but uh, in the real tube it will be much more difficult because we will not have a screw join and I hope we will not have to think how to get it into it so maybe we can use some spring contact or something in this manner. So there are still a lot of engineering problems ahead. We need to work on them and solve them eventually. And uh, a whole another story is a glass work. I think we currently have all the tools and equipment that we need to make a good seal on the H tube. But I'm thinking about the future tubes and maybe one day we will want to do a manufacturing step which is called a drop seal. It's a sealing technique when you have the tube in vertical position and you let the excess glass to be dropped by gravity sealing the bottom of the tube. There is a great documentary on the YouTube where drop sealing is part of it. Now, after washing to remove any grease or small particles, the guns are ready for sealing into the bulbs. The gun assembly is mounted on this automatic machine. The bulb, which has been washed out with inert gas, is placed in position and the gun assembly, the glass foot of which has been preheated, is automatically located correctly in the neck of the bulb. As the tube rotates on its axis, it also moves to successive stations where gas flames soften the glass at the point of junction between the gun mount and the neck. As the neck and foot fuse together, the excess glass falls away. The sealing in completed, the next stage is to pump the air out of the tube to form a vacuum. Building machinery like in a documentary is not possible for us, it's, it's too complex for high volume production, for mass production of, of tubes. But there is one tool that would enable us to do it. Uh, it's a glass lay, but it's a special type of a glass lay because the normal ones are oriented horizontally. But there's one type of a glass slate which can be tilted to a vertical position. As far as I know it's quite a rare type, so the more I'm happy that we were able to get one. And big thanks goes to Andy from Great Britain who told us about one of these slates available. So now we need to completely disassemble it and clean all the parts and put it back into working order and hopefully then it will, it will seal some new tubes. Thanks for attention and see you at the next video.
polský jeřáb, to musím držet. Je super, držet. Uh-huh. Aha, To je polský? Hm, tohle no. Je to to. Ne, to je to, to zamky. <coughs> Neujedu aj s tím. No. Čekáme to na paletu, na paletu, ne? Co myslíš? Na paletě, jak teda, to třeba tam měla tu vysku, ne? Thank you.